CSS custom properties are amazing. The name of them seems a little strange though, but that's because we don't usually use them as custom properties. We often only use them as custom values, really. We declare them in our HTML or in our root, and then we just let them live there and don't do anything with them except reusing them over and over again, which is great, but it's not using them to their full potential. The real power of custom properties comes when we start using them like, well, properties. But I won't lie to you, it can take a little bit more setup, but the payoff for it can really be worth it. So let's go and take a look. Hello, my front end friends, and welcome back to yet another video. I'm so glad that you've come to join me once again. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel, I help you fall madly deeply in love with CSS. And if I can't get you to fall in love with it, I'm hoping to at least help you be a little bit less frustrated by it. Today, we're doing that by exploring the wonders that are custom properties. So let's go and dive in and take a look. All right, so here we are in VS Code and I've set up this little pricing table thing already. And you can see I'm using some custom properties here. I only have three colors because there's actually only three colors being used in all of this. Um, so my brand color is the lighter blue, the black is actually the really dark blue background, and then the white is, well, my white. Uh, nothing too complicated there. And if we come and look, you can see I've actually set up my custom properties and, and used them throughout. And so yeah, that's it. That's everything set up and it's all working. Um, but the issue with doing things this way is we do end up writing a lot of code sometimes um, that doesn't necessarily have to be written. And what I mean by that, if I come and look at my HTML over here and we take a look, you'll see I have my tier here, which is this guy. Uh, and then over here I have a tier and then I have the inverted class here, which is inverting the color. And if I go and take a look here in my inverted, um, I've sort of had to do like inverted tier title, inverted button, um, and I've, you know, inverted this and you have to sort of switch things around and play with them a little bit. And even this isn't really great, right? Um, cause what if I wanted to use my inverted class somewhere that's not on a tier and then I have to get like more specific with the titles and okay, it works, but it, it's, it's kind of far from ideal. And so let's go and actually delete all of this and just hit save and we go back to having nothing inverted. And now what we could do is we could come up and actually do everything here as like something locally scoped on the tier itself. But I'm actually gonna push things a little bit further. And this is after talking with Adam Argyle a little bit, who's pushed um, custom properties a lot lately with his open prop system. And sort of the idea of having custom properties as our own properties that redefine like entire systems. And I'm going to come here on my body and I'm going to sort of define a few things here. And you're going to see this, this is going to take a minute to set up. But once we start using this, it's the theming and the styling of everything can just flow so quickly. Um, so it's really cool. And so I'm going to come here and I'm going to write body. And I, th and this is really like, if you prefer text, you could do text. Uh, you could even do like color uh, as just like your color property. There, you could really put anything you want here. Um, but just bear with me. You're going to see why I, I like this. And I use body just because it's like my body, my body's color. Um, so we're going to go with body and we're going to do a var of color white. And you might be saying, well, you know, why, why redefine it? You know, we have it set up in, in different places already. And I just realized my body had the wrong color on it. This should have been white here. Um, but the, the color white here, you might be saying like, what's the point when we could just define it like this? And you're, you'll see why as we build this out a little bit. So bear with me for a minute. We can do heading is var color white as well. So they're both using the same color. Uh, and then we take a, another step in. I mean, really these could actually be defined over here as well. And you're just sort of pointing back at things, but it's sort of like setting, this is like my theme and then we're redefining things here. But if you wanted to do this in a different way, you could also do that. There's no like hard and fast rules here. And, um, but here, yeah, so we have my color, my heading, we do BG for background and do my var color, color black here. Uh, we can have my button. Now we could have button text and do var color white. And we could have my button BG and do var color uh, brand. And then we could even do a button, button text hover and have my var color. Uh, in that case, when we hover, we want it to stay white. So we'll stick with white as the default, but I'm still defining it anyway. Uh, and again, you'll see why. And then we do our button tech uh, BG hover. And in this case, we'll do my color black. And this is sort of like a mini little design system that we're sort of building here out of custom properties that are being defined on the body. Um, you could also, if you wanted to define these on your HTML, 
Uh, any of those types of things would work. Uh, but now we're actually going to set up where we're going to use these a little bit. So here I can say that my color white is actually going to be my body color. And my background is going to be my BG color. And here my page title is going to use my heading. Um, for now, I'm going to leave this one, but we'll come back to this pricing plans one in a second. Now everything's working and everything should be fine. Uh, and of course it's not because I misspelled color. <laughs> I usually do CLR for color. And in this case, I used color on all of them. So there we go. We fixed that. Sorry about that. <laughs> you were probably looking at that going, Kevin. Um, but there we go. We fixed that nice and easy. If you want to hide to do that, you select one of them, push control D, it selects it. And then you just keep pushing control D and it will select all of them in VS code. Uh, I'm on control D because I'm on a Windows. If you're on Mac, that might be command D. So let's come down and what I'm going to do now in these pricing tiers is where these are set up. Um, instead of coming in and actually doing that on these individual tiers here, I think something would be a little bit more reusable and, and better. I'm actually going to delete these from here. Um, and everything will sort of disappear. And now it goes back to that, that default styling, but it's using all those things from what we set up originally right here. So at this point, I think for me, the best way to do it is to come in and to create sort of a theme in class that we can use. And so one way we can actually do that is by using this guy right here and saying class is star equal to theme. And that means, uh, and even I'm gonna do theme like that. Uh, what it means is any class that has contains theme hyphen in it, um, so this could be used anywhere as long as theme hyphen is used somewhere in the class. What that's going to do is set the background to var bg and it's going to set the color to var body. Um, and the reason I'm doing the background and the body here and I'm not doing things like the button colors and all of that is because those were already applying directly onto our buttons. So they're being applied to very specific cases. Um, this would really be in this case is for things like color, which are inherited. So this doesn't work. And so it just makes it a little bit easier to use. Um, so then what we can do is we can come in here and say theme theme, and I'll do inverted as my base theme. And we can say that the BG is var white. Uh, we said color, white, color, white, and then we can have a body which is var color dark. And we can even have our heading, which is going to use a var color. Uh, do if it's a white background, actually the heading will stay the same color. So there we go. We can set up a theme inverted. And now if I come over to theme inverted, and I'm not actually going to do it here. We're going to do that on the first one tier theme inverted. And that should give us a white background. Ooh, the text colors did not change uh, because why? Uh, because I put color dark here and not color black, which is what I use. There we go. And so then we get this inverted color scheme. And because of how we've set things up, the button in this case actually works and we don't have to change anything. Um, but let's come and do the brand one next. So we could say here would be a theme brand because the background is our brand color. So then we could say the BG is my var uh, color brand. We could say that the body in this case is actually going to stay white. So if you don't want to overwrite it, you don't have to, but we could say that the body is my var color white, if you want to be more explicit. And then let's come and apply that. So that's going to be on our next one theme, uh, brand. And you can see that switches over now. Aha, we've run into an issue with my heading color, not changing. So here in my theme brand, we can come down and it's not going to work right away but we say that my heading is var color white as well. And it, as I said, it's not going to work right away. And that's because we never set this up to actually work on our headings. And if I come and look at my tier title, I set that up with my color brand. So here we just have to change this over to use my heading. And we can see, Hey, it's working there. Uh, but it's breaking. Did I not set up my heading properly? Ah, the default heading is my white. So we can fix that here in my inverted theme. We want the heading to be my var color brand. Look at that. It's working. And then there we go. We have three different themes now, but we could come in and create a new theme. And this theme now, the button doesn't look very good. So we could come on this one and say, anytime we have the theme brand, we could actually make changes to this. So here we would do our 
um, background our button color could be my var color brand and it becomes button uh, bg can be my var color white and there we go except my button text i think i called it ha i did and of course now oh it's actually working for my hover color so i don't have to change it but just for fun if we wanted to in this theme we could have our button bg hover and we could say this is red just because we want a different color and just to show you that it does work and as you can see right now we're really running into this world of this being custom properties i have a button bg property a button text property a heading property that i'm then coming through and changing and i'm setting them to other custom properties because i think it makes sense to use our initial setup but we don't have to do that you could come in and make a theme wild and we could do my bg is actually a linear gradient that goes from red to blue and my color and my body is yellow and my heading is pink and my button text is green and my button background is black or whatever we want and then just come in here come all the way down to the next one and do theme wild and there you go you get this weird theme coming in and it really makes it for custom properties that are custom to however I want to name them set them up and then I can control them and have all my theming down here and the one cool thing with this too is because they're custom properties you can come in and even do an at media prefers color scheme dark and I could either redo an entire one here or I could even redo it on the body, right? So let's do that. Let's, or even we sort of are in a dark, but it's, I know that's my system preferences. Um, let's just change this one for the fun of it. Um, or the inverted one, you know, let's just come in here just to show you that it would work. So my theme inverted, I could come in and change this to just be black and make this one white and hit save. And it switched over because I'm on my system preferences. I do have dark set or this could even be black and it's going to follow that. So I could change the entire default theme. I could change each one of the theme classes I have and come up with completely different color schemes and different settings. And you could do this with font sizes. You could do this with anything you want really. And if you'd like to work with something that's actually a pre-built system of custom properties and not have to define all of yours in the first place, but just sort of manipulate them in themes and do all of this fun stuff with them, I've looked at Adam Argyle's open props in the past and the video where I explore that is right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I'd like to say a very big thank you to my supporters of awesome over on Patreon, Jan, Johnny, Stuart, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.